Video game boss fights are usually pretty easy to spot on the horizon. Ha! Huh, this room has a lot of health and ammo in it, hasn't it? And what's in that next room? A big empty arena? Well, either there's something ugly with a massive health bar waiting in here, or you've really gone all out for my birthday this year. But rules are made to be broken, and these seven mavericks throw you into boss fights you never saw coming. Enjoy, but also beware spoilers for the following games. You begin Dark Souls as a lolloping level 1 no mark with a broken sword and no idea that all the messages on the floor around you are there to troll you. Don't fall for it. This is famously one of the most challenging games from modern times and you haven't even got a working weapon yet. On the vulnerability scale that puts you somewhere between asking whether we're exclusive yet and in urgent need of a festival toilet. It would be a particularly bad time to open a door and have a massive demon drop down directly in front of you on the other side, so obviously that's exactly what happens. Oh man, love this for me. Fortunately for you, this is merely a warning of a future boss fight. You can fight the demon now, sure, but you can also run away like a big brave hero and fight this guy 20 minutes later when you're slightly better equipped. Haha, <laughs> sucker! But unfortunately for you, this demon is not the only surprise fight waiting in this room. Haha, <laughs> sucker! After you leave the asylum, you can get your giant crow buddy to bring you back to where your adventure, or more accurately, pain train, began. Head back into the arena where you defeated your first boss, and there are of course some undead lying in ambush to the side, waiting to deliver a classic Dark Souls jump scare. The hell, Dark Souls? Still, at least that surprise fight is over and done with- OH NO! The floor caved in underneath you, and there's another huge demon waiting for you. Great! We're not quite sure why this floor falls away so easily under your feet, considering the asylum demon stomped around and smushed its butt all over it like this, and it held up no problem. But fall away it does, so it's time to enjoy a surprise boss fight with the stray demon, which I'm sure will go very well considering we had zero time to psych ourselves up for it. It didn't. Well, there's another surprise for you. If you're not familiar with the Yakuza games, they're a clever blend of fighting for respect and power in a brutal organised crime ecosystem, and arsing about at remote controlled car tracks and karaoke bars. There's more vendettas and double crossings going on in here than a professional wrestling pay-per-view. Even so, when you find yourself in the long and arduous gauntlet of final boss battles towards the end of the game, you are thoroughly blindsided by the appearance of Masato Aizawa. He's the last fella you expected to encounter in this sequence of boss battles unless you brought a Ouija board with you, because Masato Aizawa is supposed to be dead. As far as you knew, he died 20 hours back in that Yamagasa family raid business. Remember that? Aizawa Ima. Doko ni iru? Hontou ni aizu wa kawaii yatsu deshita. Daga, shiri sugita. Ura no ura made o. Masaka? Omae. Inuboe yama no sanchu ni. And yet here he is, the worst dead person I've ever seen, on account of how he's alive and strutting around and having a surprise fist fight with you. <laughs> 
And hang on, before all this, weren't we sort of on the same side? As it turns out, Kiryu's as easily double-crossed by a secretly alive Omi Alliance member as he is distracted by arcade attractions and RC cars. <laughs> so, very. Which means Kiryu and Aizawa set about punching seven shades of QTEs out of each other in one of the game's more memorable and extended fight sequences. <laughs> If I knew this was going to happen, I wouldn't have spent all that money on that reef. Depending on the choices you made in your playthrough of Undertale, you'll either know Sans as the paunchy, mitten-handed skeleton who guides you along your quest and does silly jokes, the paunchy mitten-handed skeleton who rains an absolute hellstorm of death and fury on you in one of the toughest boss encounters you'll ever face in your entire life. Usually an easygoing, chill guy, Sans turns full Fredo Corleone on you if you opt for the genocide run and try to kill every character in the game. Although, I guess strictly speaking, that's you going Fredo on him? Firstly, killing everything is what you do in 99% of other video games, so why would you expect to be punished with a sudden super hard boss fight for doing it in this one? Secondly, the last person you would expect to give you that super hard boss fight is a friendly skeleton in a hoodie who's always playing trombone and once tried to sell you fried snow. <laughs> Further proof that anybody who finds whoopee cushions genuinely funny simply can't be trusted. Pitiful grandchild, this was your last wish. To see Ashina return from the great beyond. Jinichiro Ashina is the guy in Sekiro who chops your arm off at the beginning of the game. And we all remember that guy, because he chops your arm off. <laughs> hey, I was using that! Now, Sekiro is the second From Software title to feature on this list, so you can already guess that when you meet Jinichiro in combat, defeating him is roughly as tricky as trying to cook a perfect souffle while on a roller coaster. <laughs> You waggle your swords about for a bit, you take a break to shout ugly words into a sofa cushion, and eventually you come back and prevail. <laughs> Stick it, Genichiro, but I'll teach you to cut our arm off. Except, what happens next is that an old man crawls out of him and attacks you with such ferocity that you can't help but miss that fight against the stray demon when you fell through that floor that time. Ah, making memes. The old man is Ishin the Sword Saint, but there's nothing saintly about what he's doing with that sword. <laughs> Sekiro toys with your expectations so mercilessly here. You were done. It was over. The cushion could go back on the sofa. But no, now here's an actual sword saint using that sword of his to chop you into a coarse pâté. Like with any other boss, Ishin's attacks can be deflected and countered once you've learned all his attack patterns. The problem is now, the trust has been broken. What's going to crawl out of him when you beat him? A smaller sword saint? And then a smaller sword saint crawls out of him? I'm going to be here all day. Come
Coming hot on the heels of two dark industrial games, Final Fantasy IX's picture book fantasy and its bobble-headed characters was quite the change of pace. Somebody at Square Enix took the wheel and pulled a Yui back towards Wholesome. Which, okay, quick question then, what's this thing doing here in the final boss fight? Necron, a muscular cosmic horror with more tentacles and wings than a Lovecraft fan art tumbler, just kind of turns up right at the very end of the game, like a jobbing endgame boss sent by a temp agency when the original boss called in sick. You're the uh, giant unknowable terror with the big old health bar we spoke to earlier on the phone, are you? Great. Um, if you could just stand there, then the player should be here any minute. They're on the right game disc. It's especially weird to be fighting Necron because up until this point, for dozens of hours and game disc swaps, the main antagonist has been flowy outfit-wearing megalomaniac Kuja. You've sat through his grandiose speeches about why it's a cool idea to wipe out absolutely all life, and you are probably quite looking forward to messing up his hair in a final showdown, then calling it a day. But instead, after this encounter with Kuja, and without literally a previous single word about Necron, here it is, fresh from the ab roller. It's like they weren't even thinking about continuity, swapping characters out at the last second. See? It's weird. You're paired. Yeah, that's right. Question is, who are you? Oh, quiet. Don't move. Was that a berserker? She can hear us. She can smell us. Considering the entire cast of Gears of War looked like the WWE roster at a paintballing centre, it's not easy to make them seem vulnerable or to dwarf them with the scale of their enemy. The solution, if you're Epic Games in 2006, is to bring in a 10-foot linebacker who's traded all his skin for extra bones and a truckload of steroids. Please welcome to the stage, the Berserker. <laughs> Up until this point in the game, you've been steamrolling everything, so it's unexpected and humbling when the Berserker shows up and does stuff like this. Oh my god. You said it, Dom. Standard weapons don't work against the Berserker, if you could ever call an assault rifle with a chainsaw attached to it a standard weapon. That means the best way to bag yourself a berserker is to lure it out of the tombs by teasing it with a few normal bullets and then doing Marcus Phoenix's patented awkward crouch sprint when it lunges for you. Get the berserker to follow you all the way out into the open and you can call in the Hammer of Dawn via satellite and finally put an end to its berserking days. Now then, where was I? Ah yes. Crouching behind stuff. Well, if it isn't Saucy Jack. Just a little too late, as usual. I'm strong. If you ask me to guess the political platform of United States Senator Stephen Armstrong from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, I'd have probably gone with deregulation of human growth hormone and increased funding into stretch fit shirts. <laughs> Idiot! However, at the end of the game, it turns out that Armstrong's goals are quite different and involve total freedom for the individual, no meddling by governmental forces, a radical free market without petty morality, oh yeah, and killing you in Metal Gear Excelsis, a heavily armed hexapedal mech. character Raiden has already been killed quite enough recently, thank you very much, and so you clash with Armstrong and his Metal Gear in an epic encounter that very much has final boss fight vibes. Eventually, Metal Gear Excelsus lies defeated, smashed to ribbons and torn to pieces by your powerful cyborg attacks, 
And as the bested senator emerges from its cockpit in his J.C. Penny finest, you might justifiably start to relax. I mean, what's this Kevin James-looking MF gonna do to a cyborg ninja? Sumo wrestle me? Oh, you've gotta be kidding me! Oh, okay. Turns out that Armstrong isn't quite done, and after absorbing a bunch of green energy from his stricken Metal Gear, he starts absolutely leathering Raiden harder than anything else you've encountered in the game so far. <laughs> How are you doing this? Nano machine, son. Ah, of course. Silly of me to ask, really. What follows is a brutal, gruelling, easily 20 minute long boss fight that I can almost guarantee no one saw coming. Because honestly, who had US Senator is actually secretly a megalomaniacal insane monster powered by experimental nanomachines on their bingo card? I mean, it is a Kojima game. Oh, yeah, you're right. Probably should have guessed that one. Thank you for watching this video on Outside Extra about the seven unexpected boss fights that came out of absolutely nowhere and blindsided you with their unpredictability. But I'll tell you what's not unpredictable is the week on week quality of the list videos here Woo! on Outside Extra. So I suggest this one just to pick one at, at random. This was a recent video on Outside Extra about the weirdest characters in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom or if I might be so bold, I could recommend you this one from Outside Xbox, which is about the seven times you failed by being too good at the game, if you can imagine that. Please enjoy one or the other, or both.